Hi everyone, it's Lindsay. Welcome back to another video. Today I have just a really simple Easter card to share with you. Before I do that, I want to remind you to follow me across social media if you haven't already. Those links will be down in the description box below. Also, while you're down there, if you enjoy my content, you can subscribe to my channel. And if you enjoy this video, you can click the like button, which always, always helps so much. I'll be using Cracker Box and Susie stamps stamps on my card today. All the supplies, everything I'm using is going to be listed and linked down in the description box below. So if you have any questions about the supplies I'm using, that kind of thing, you can find those down there. I'm starting off with this background die. This is a cover plate die from Cat Scrappiness. I actually used this to create some Christmas cards, but I wanted to turn this into more of a spring background. So I went ahead and die cut that from some white cardstock and I'm gonna ink blend behind it. So I'll be ink blending directly on my card base. I have taped down my card base to a sheet of computer paper, and I've covered the back of, or a part of the back of my card base with some painter's tape. That's just gonna keep it free from any ink, keep it from any smudges. I'm using three different Catherine Pooler inks to do my background today, and I'm using the Clarity Stencil Brushes. I wanted a very, very, very light background, um, very pastel looking, so that's why I went with these brushes. I have a lot of different blending tools right now, and I love them all, but it's just about the kind of look that I'm going for. These are by far the easiest way for me to get the softest color, so I'm using it's a girl ink, limoncello, limoncello, I'm not sure how to say that ink still, but I'm using that in the center. And then I'm using a little bit of pixie dust right there on the bottom. I'm using a different brush for each color and just blending back and forth between the three of them until I get the blend I'm looking for. The great thing about overlaying a cover plate die onto an ink blended background is you don't need to worry about the blending a whole lot. The majority of it's going to be covered up. You're not going to see all those lines in between each. So as you see when I overlay this die, it looks really, really well blended, even though it's not my best blending. So you don't have to spend an hour blending this out. Just do your best and it's going to look great once you get that die over it anyway. To put that die over the top of the card base, I'm using liquid glue here. I find this the easiest to work with with cover plate dies just because you have that little bit of playtime and wiggle room to move it around and get it lined up perfectly on your card base. I'm using the On Point glue from Imagine. I love, love, love this tip on it. And it has a little pin that goes down in it when you put the cap on. So you don't have to worry about it getting clogged like I do the rest of my glues, which I love. I'm putting glue all the way around the edges and then just in the center of the die cut and around some of the larger portions. Not every little bit of this die is going to get glue. That would take forever and the other glue that I had put on first would dry by then. So just pick and choose a few spots to put it in. Then I'll go ahead and place that die right over the top and then I placed a heavy just kind of box on top of it to hold it in place while it dried. I set that aside for a while because I need to work on my overlay now. I'm going to stamp my little cross here, and I'm using my Misty, or my Mini Misty, to go ahead and stamp this. I wanted this to be a nice brown color, so I'm using Icing on the Cake ink from Catherine Pooler, and I'm stamping that down onto white cardstock. I'm doing a double stamp here. This is a really detailed image, and I just want it nice and dark and rich, so I'll go ahead and double stamp that. Whenever you're using your Misty or your Mini Misty with your Cracker Box and Susie stamps, just remember to take out the foam pad so the stamps fit in there. Every single time I forget to take it out and I wonder why my stamps won't fit. To move on, I'm going to go ahead and color in with some colored pencils. Now these are brand new to me. I am just playing around with them and I will have a review on these colored pencils soon. I will leave a link to them down in the description box below just for now. But I am still testing them out. If you want to wait, I'll give you my full opinion on them soon enough. 
I am using just different colors here. So I went with some creams and some corals for the lilies, and then I'm using some greens and also the white to blend out for the leaves. I like to just layer up color, go in, add my darkest, my lightest, and kind of blend in between the two to get the color that I'm looking for. For this particular card, I am not using any OMS, Gamsol, and blending stumps to blend this out. However, you could if you wanted to, but I kind of like the look of the colored pencil marks on this particular piece, so I left them in. For the cross itself, I went in with a lighter brown on the center, and then on the outer edge, it's got this nice little outline, and I'm going in with a very much darker brown for that and that finishes it super super simple i fussy cut the image out and then it was time to put the front of the card together there's a closer look at that colored image very quick coloring the colored pencils did a beautiful job but like i said i'm still playing around with them i'll let you know what i think later on I did want a place to put my cut image or my stamped image, but I didn't want to cover up too much of that background. So what I decided to do was take this oval zigzag die from Cat Scrappiness. I die cut that from some vellum. That's going to give me a place to kind of highlight my stamped image, but you're still going to be able to see through it and you won't cover up any of that background that that die is a pretty intricate die. It does take a while to punch out all the little pieces once they've been die cut. So that is quite a bit of work and I didn't want to cover it up. I applied some fun foam or some foam tape onto the back of my stamped image, put that onto the vellum die cut. Then I'm adding more foam tape onto the back of that. So it's going to be a double layer here. If this is too much, you could always just take one of those pieces out or you could glue on both layers and you'd have a really, really flat card if that is more your style. Now, once that was in place, the card is completely finished. I didn't want to add anything extra. I thought about some Nouveau drops. I thought about a few jewels, that kind of thing, but I thought this was just perfect the way it was. So I moved on to the inside of the card, which I will show you now. I like to go ahead and bring elements from the outside of the card to the inside. So what I decided to do was take that cross stamp and I'm again inking it up with the same icing on the cake ink. Now stamping that down, it's a pretty dark brown ink. So I wanted a lighter color. I went ahead and stamped off once onto a scrap piece of paper and then I'll go ahead and stamp down for that second generation stamping and I've got this very much lighter brown ink so it's going to fade into the background a little bit. It's not going to be as pronounced of a stamped image. Then I took the pixie dust ink that I used on the front as well, inked up a happy Easter sentiment and stamped that to just the right of my stamped image. I did all of this kind of on the bottom portion of the inside of the card base. I did get a little ink smudge so what I did was just just take my sanding eraser and just sanded that very quickly before the dye ink had time to really soak into the paper. So if you make any smudges with dye ink, get in there and get it removed as soon as possible. Don't let it sit and soak into the fibers. You're going to have a much harder time removing it. If that does happen and you can't get it all out, just take a little white gel pen and go over the top of it and that should cover it. That finished the inside of the card though. I absolutely adore this card. It was pretty simple to do and a whole lot of fun to make. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and this super, super simple Easter card. That is going to do it for me today. There are going to be links on the left side of your screen that you can click on. You can also subscribe to my channel over there if you haven't already. Don't forget all the information down in the description box below. Thanks for watching and happy crafting.